Uh, hello, everyone. We are starting the webinar now. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is Robin here from Zoho. Before we get started with the webinar, some general housekeeping stuff on our webinar platform, Zoho Showtime. On your left pane, you can see questions, polls, and uh, chats tab. Uh, if you have any questions on e-invoicing, you can ask us your question there, and we will answer the question for you at the end of the session. Uh, you've already participated in two polls. We'll have one more for you. Uh, please participate in all the polls. Uh, it's good for the democracy. Um, so, And if you have anything to, that you would like to tell us, you can please use the chat tab. Like, if you can hear me now, please respond with a hello or a thumbs up in the chat tab. Yes, I can see responses. Yeah, so everybody can see the screen and everybody can hear me. So thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, if you find any issue with the audio or the video feed, kindly refresh your browser. Uh, if that doesn't work, please try a hard refresh on your Windows laptop or uh, computer. It would be Control, Shift, and R on your Mac, uh, MacBook Pros or Macintosh laptops. It would be Command, Shift, and R. Uh, so coming back to e-invoicing. So about e-invoicing in Zoho products, uh, e-invoicing will be available in uh, Zoho Books, Zoho Invoice, Zoho Inventory, and Zoho Subscriptions from October 1st, 2020. Uh, we will have our product expert illustrate how you can use Zoho invoice, uh, like e-invoicing on Zoho Books after uh, Bimal Jain uh, is uh, done with his session. Uh, in the session on e-invoicing, uh, CA Bimal Jain, uh, sir, will explain about uh, objective and the need of e-invoicing, the three Ws and H of uh, e-invoicing, process of e-invoicing, how to use IRP portal to generate IRN, features and format of e-invoice, and a QR code and uh, the challenges in, that are involved in e-invoicing. Uh, about the speaker of the session, uh, uh, CA Bimal Jain is a member of uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of India since May 1994, member of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India since uh, December 2006, along with a bachelor's degree in law. Uh, he has more than 21 years of experience in indirect taxation and specializes in all aspects of GST, uh, service tax, uh, VAT, Central uh, sales tax, central excise, custom, uh, foreign trade policy, special economic zones, and export uh, oriented units and export import laws. He's presently the executive consultant of A2Z Tax Corp LLP, a boutique indirect tax firm. Uh, he has professional membership in following uh, organizations, mentor of indirect tax committee of Progress Harmony Development uh, Chamber of Commerce, PhD, uh, PhD Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Chairman of Corporate Advisory Committee of IPEM Group of Institutions, Member of Indirect Tax Committees of uh, Asocham and FICCI, uh, Special Invitee of Indirect Tax Committee of ICAI and ICSI, Member of Eminent Faculties in Indirect Tax Committee of ICAI, ICSI, ICCMA. CMA. Uh, few of the awards and recognition in his portfolio uh, would be a key speaker at uh, Guinness World Record made by ICSI in largest taxation lesson on GST, attend by, attended by over 4,500 plus participants, uh, breaking the record earlier held by uh, Japan. Uh, business leader award from Amity School, Noida. Best speaker from NIRC, ICAI, ICWAI. Young Achievers Award at Igniting Minds, uh, 2015. Best participant award in MSOP, 117th batch of ICSI. Uh, without much further ado, uh, let's welcome uh, CA Bimal Jain to our session. Hello, sir. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can get your voice, Robin. Good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, I'm passing the session control to you, sir, now. Please, please. Yes. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, your video is clear to me. Yes. Uh, we'll just check with the participants as well. Am I audible? And uh, my video is clear to all the participants. May I request? Can you put some comment in your chat box, please? Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. Welcoming all uh, friends joining today on this important webinar on e invoice. I'm starting, Robin, then. Okay. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah. So to start with the first and foremost point, we are here today from uh, 
important aspect and change which is happening in GST since July 1, 2017. We are going to discuss about invoicing in GST regime. I'm sure that a lot of you are thinking that this is not applicable to me because my aggregate turnover is not more than 500 crore in preceding financial year. But when I'm going to deliberate today and present my subject matter on e-invoicing, you will come to know that it is as important as it is for the supplier whose aggregate turnover is more than 500 crore rupees in a preceding financial year. Having said, those who are joining today, at the outset, let me thank each one of you for joining today on this important webinar organized by Joho on topic e-invoicing. Let me start. I prepared this uh, presentation, which would be readily available to those participants who are joining today. And in this presentation, I'm going to discuss multiple way to look at invoicing provision, which is now going to be introduced from 1st of October 2020. So having said that, let me start my presentation. And in this presentation, I'm going to cover the important aspect what is the need of invoicing in GST regime? As such, we all are filing uh, GSTR 1, which gets auto-populated in GSTR 2A. Now we got another form, GSTR 2B, for availing credit with the eligible and ineligible credit. But why then this e-invoicing is important, objective, and need? We are going to discuss why this e-invoicing, who need to raise, when to rage and how this e invoicing need to be generated. I'm going to discuss process flow. What would be the process flow for generation of e invoicing? I'm going to discuss the importance of IRP, which is invoice registration portal for generation of IRN invoice reference number. Features and format of e invoice with quick response code and the challenges with frequently asked question. It is uh, more or less 45 minutes capsule for all of you. It is uh, quite the way I prepared it. I'm sure by watching this today's webinar, you will have 99% clarity about the invoicing, which is going to be introduced from October 1, 2020. Let's start with the first and foremost, we are going to, you know, worst certain myth. Myth is there in the market. In the name of generation of e-invoice, there is a myth in the market that we need to raise the invoice on GST common portal. This is totally incorrect. I am going to tell you that how this would be, but for sure, we are not going to generate e-invoice on GST common portal. Going forward, the second myth could be that there is new and standard invoice format, new format which is coming out and being designed. It is not fully correct. I do agree that the e-schema prescribed for invoice, which is going to be uniform, but there is nothing like new invoice format which we are referring to. So again, this myth is being turned away. Going forward, that we all are talking about this is applicable only for the invoices, tax invoices, but not applicable for debit note and credit note. For clarity, I'm going to discuss today that this is applicable even for the debit note and credit note for all B2B supplies. So again, this is the myth which is going away. So what is the fundamental which we are going to discuss today? So this is the fundamental and this is the silver lining you can say for e-invoicing in GST regime. E-invoicing is what? It is B2B invoices, which is issued by suppliers. And once this invoice is being generated, this invoice is going to be generated from your own ERP accounting and billing software. Whatever accounting and billing software or ERP you are working on, you need to generate your own invoice from your own system only. Such invoice need to be having specified particulars as per the ski schema and should be converted into JSON file. This is the need. 
once this invoice which is coming as per the e schema having standard particulars converted into json file now this json file of invoice is going to be uploaded in a dedicated invoice registration portal which has been created by government and that would be www invoice1.gst.gov.in and once you are uploading these particulars on this dedicated irp this irp is going to validate your data once validation is being done it is going to be digitally signed and a specific and unique irn invoice reference number going to be generated and it will be returned back to the supplier along with qr code qr dedicated dynamic quick response code to the supplier and supplier then further use this particular e invoice for preparation of gst return gstr1 for generation of e way bill on the gst system and he can also transfer this e invoice either in json file or pdf or printed we are going to discuss all aspect pertaining to e invoice in later part of my presentation having said so what is important e invoicing which we are raising it is going to be standard e invoice as per the schema from your own accounting billing and erp so you are not going to generate on gst common portal it is going to be generated from your own accounting billing and erp software having said that now let's move what is the objective why we all are looking for need of e invoicing i can tell you from uh, two side there the taxpayer and there the tax department which is government of india central government and state government if you look at from central government and state government perspective recently you must have heard of bogus invoice lot of input tax credit is being taken on bogus invoice raised by the tax evader estimated amount is 1 lakh 20000 crore rupees in last 3 years since implementation of gst lost only on the bogus invoice raised by the tax evader so government is trying and they are trying to create deterrent measure against the raising of bogus invoice what is the advantage to the taxpayer taxpayer getting a lot of advantage with this e invoicing and we are here to discuss how the honest taxpayer should be rewarded it is a better taxpayer service once your invoice which is being standardized as per is e schema and converted into json file a utility which is used from your erp accounting and billing software and this json file is then push uploaded to irp dedicated portal this is the only activity which you are going to do and thereafter you are going to get unique irn number digitally signed with qr code and this irp going to push the data to your gst and common portal for your preparation of gstr1 outward supply your table number 4 table number 6 table number 9b table number 12 of gstr1 getting auto populated look at the advantage and second advantage this irp going to push the data to ebay bill portal and your part a of ebay bill 01 getting auto filled auto fill if part b information are also filled then you can generate instantly your e way bill along with this i r n e invoicing which i'm referring to the same data is going to help recipient what happened those who are recipient of this e invoice they will get their data auto populated in gstr 2a for availing input tax credit and this is all happening in a transparent manner and that is giving realistic transaction realistic at at the instant level to both taxpayer and tax department and that's what i said it's a check on tax evasion efficiency in tax administration going to increase for the simple region 
that manual process will go away and it is all automated and digitized. Having said that, the last and important one, no further reporting on GST portal or eBay bill portal because this IRP is going to push the data to GST common portal for your preparation of GSTR1 and to eBay bill portal for auto filling up part A of eBay bill. This is what the advantage. Now, when I've said this, there are a lot many other things which you can see as an advantage coming when you're generating e invoice. First of all, accuracy and reconciliation. Data which is being uploaded by supplier, auto picked up, auto populated in GSTR1, credit in the hands of recipient, all are accurate. There will not be any mismatch. Cost reduction, of course, once we automate and digitize, there would be cost reduction. Paperless e-invoice, which we are referring to. Elimination of paper. Internal control, you can always put a control and MIS for generation of invoice and check your own transaction whether invoice is generated as per the law provision, like under Section 31 of CGST Act, which is time prescribed under GST law for generation, for raising of invoice. Waiter working capital efficiency. Once it is paperless, automized, accuracy coming in. It is going to provide better working capital efficiency and better relationship with the tax department and your buyer, buyer of goods and services. So when we look at these kind of advantage, it can be summarized as a silver lining point that it is safeguard towards tax evasion. No further reporting to GST portal and eBabel portal. And this re reporting to GST become incidental byproduct. So this is the need and necessity why generation of e-invoice thought of in GST regime and that to happening after three years of GST implementation. Now I'm going to highlight some of the relevant provision, which is very much important for understanding all perspective pertaining to e-invoice. These relevant provisions I'm highlighting first from uh, CGST Act perspective and similar provision going to be applicable under SGST, UTGST and IGST Act. We are going to discuss today what is the meaning of aggregate turnover. As we all are saying, if aggregate turnover is more than 500 crore, so what is the definition of aggregate turnover? I will tell you when I'm discussing further later in the presentation. What is the meaning of tax invoice now, which is going to be e invoice, which we are referring to? What is the difference tax invoice versus e invoice? And what is the time limit to raise the invoice under section 31? Followed by credit in the hands of recipient of goods and services. So how your recipient buyer going to take credit on the basis of e invoice and your buyer may not be over and above 500 crore. He would be lesser than 500 crore. How he is going to get the credit on the e invoice generated by notified class having aggregate turnover more than 500 crore in preceding financial year. Then availing credit on tax invoice as per 16, as I said, but you got credit note and debit note, which is B2B supply and related with the original supply. What is the implication and how it needs to be generated under Section 34 of CGST Act? If you look at the relevant rule, which is important for discussion on e-invoice, then we got Rule 46 of CGST rule talking about tax invoice. Rule 47 is talking about time limit for e-swing invoice. Rule 48 is the important one and amendment is being made in Rule 48 the tax invoice, which is now going to be e-invoice in such manner, to be issued in such manner as prescribed. Rule 54, certain tax invoices in special cases and exempted from generation of e-invoice. We'll discuss all relevant points appropriately when we are going to discuss the relevant topic. I'm just highlighting these provision for your digest that these are the provision applicable when we are discussing 
invoicing provision under GST. And if you look at notification, how many notification? You should be active in a chat box as well. What do you think? How many active notification has been issued pertaining to e-invoice? Maybe I can check in a chat box. What is the answer coming out? Can I see that you can write down how many uh, notification are being issued uh, for e-invoicing? So I'm finding Anita is responding. Suryam is also responding. Piyush is also responding. You can write down whatever coming to your mind. This will help that you're going all along with me for understanding. Here is the list. Look at the list now. There are 12 numbers of notifications starting from 2018. And all notifications number are being prescribed. 74 of the 2018 in 2018. Then we got around six notification coming in 2019, followed by 2020. And the last notification, 60 and 61, 30th July 2020. Look at the timing given to all of us for preparation of e-invoicing. How to generate timing is just two months. We are standing on 16th of September today. Hardly 14 days left. I do not know at what level we are prepared. To my mind, level of preparation, readiness required on both sides, supplier and recipient. And this last notification, 60 of 2020, has revised the e-schema for the unified and standard invoice. So just two months given to us for preparation of e-invoice. So a lot of you would be thinking, and this question must be in your mind, whether this e-invoice provision going to be applicable from 1st of October 2020. To my mind, as on date, looks like it is real possibility that it is going to be 1st October 2020. And I've told you, it is not only important for the supplier having aggregate turnover more than 500 crore, it is equally applicable for the recipient of goods and services whose aggregate turnover is less than 500 crore. And I'm going to discuss these points for understanding and challenges. So preparation required at both end, supplier and the recipient. Let's move further. So I'm starting with the very first point. What e-invoice means? What is the understanding? What we all are talking about? What is this e-invoice? As I clearly told you when I started, e-invoicing is nothing but uh, reporting of specified details and particulars. Rule 46 of CGST rule has got Describe particulars. Certain more particulars like with QR code having eight specified fields in QR code. These specified particulars should be coming in a standardized unified form. And this form would be GST INB01, which should be converted into JSON file and then uploaded on government notified portal, which is called invoice registration portal and which is this portal www.invoice1.gst.gov.in and IRP going to then, then validate the data after validating the data as per the e-schema then they are going to sign it digitally and create unique invoice reference number and return to the supplier with the QR code in JSON file and then supplier going to issue the invoice to the recipient either in JSON file or PDF or printed invoice copy with the QR code. So this is what the invoicing which we are referring to. So clarity emerges that we are going to generate invoice from our own accounting, billing and ERP software. And this invoice would be standardized as per the e-schema issued by notification number 60 oblique 2020, dated 30th July 2020. So it is not going to be generated on GST common portal. It is only validation which is going on IRP. IRN generated, digitally signed, along with the QR code. This is what 
e-invoicing means all about. Who need to generate e-invoice? Important provision. Who are supposed to follow the generation of e-invoice provision? As per the provision, I'm not citing all the notification. As a background, I give in all the notification and the relevant section and rule of CGST Act. Invoice is compulsory for registered person. For registered person whose aggregate turnover based on PAN basis, all India in a financial year is more than 500 crore for B2B supplies. PAN India. So, meaning thereby, if you are a registered person and your aggregate turnover process 500 crore. In a financial year, now this there are some dispute which is going on in a market. First dispute, this 500 crore threshold to be calculated for the preceding financial year or current financial year. And clarity emerges that NIC has issued frequently asked question. And we have come to know that government is going to issue another notification specifying this that if any registered person whose aggregate turnover in any of the three preceding financial year, 17, 18, 18, 19, and 19, 20, crosses 500 crore, they are going to undertake generation of invoice. And what is the meaning of aggregate turnover? The meaning of aggregate turnover is your Total taxable supplies, either B2B or B2C, intra or inter, plus your export turnover, plus your exempted supplies, club together, plus any transaction between distinct person in GST. So your distinct person in GST for the region, you have taken separate registration and the same PAN number, you become distinct person. Turnover between distinct person need to be added in aggregate turnover. And total of it need to be checked. If crossing 500 crore, then you are the person, registered person, who need to compulsory follow the generation of invoice provision for B2B supplies. Business to business. Registered to registered person. There is another provision and this provision is for B2C supply. So registered person having aggregate turnover, more than 500 crore, but for B2C supply, registered person to unregistered person, then QR code. QR code need to be created, generated and put on invoice. And for this B2C supply, you need not require to be registered on IRP. You need not require to generate anything on IRP. It is being made and generated by you through your accounting, billing, or ERP software. Now, this is the two important provision. Now, who all are exempted? They need not require to follow the provision of generation of invoice first scj unit i'm saying scj unit not developer so developer is required to only scj unit is being exempted insurance banking including non-banking financial company exempted goods transport agency exempted Passenger transport services exempted and multiplex cinema admission exempted. So these are exclusion. They need not require to follow e-invoicing provision. Let me ask one question to all of you. Let's say I'm a registered person, ABC Company Limited. I got 450 crore rupees aggregate turnover coming from SCJ unit and 100 crore rupees turnover coming as a normal 
as a DTA, normal taxable person, total 550 crore, wherein I got 450 crore coming from ACJ unit, 100 crore coming as a normal taxable person. What is your answer? Let me see in chat box. Do I require to follow e-invoicing provision? Please. Do I require to follow e-invoicing provision? Answer given by Neeraj, Anup, Suryam, Raja Lakshmi. They are saying yes, applicable. Now my next question to all of you. Do I require to follow this uh, e-invoicing provision only for the normal supply, 100 crore? Or for this SEJ unit, which is 450 crore? So it is only for 100 crore or 450 crore. Please tell me, 100 crore or 450 crore. That's what I'm looking from all of you. SEJ unit is a gym tit. Normal is 100 crore. My answer would be, Sibam, my answer would be, it would be only for 100 crore. So this exemption is QR business, not entity. It is for the relevant business. Any banking company exempted, but any banking company undertaking non-banking transaction, commercial transaction, to that extent, this e-invoicing provision is going to be applicable. This is what my answer. Now, which supplies to be covered for generation of invoice? Which supplies? Look at the provision that uh, they are referring to that uh, B2B supply. So when I say B2B supply, then GST invoice, debit note, and credit note. For this, this is going to be applicable. And one more aspect they have added and provided a clarity as a frequently asked question, export invoices are also covered for generation of e-invoicing. Otherwise, export invoice is not B2B. I'm going to raise invoice to my recipient outside India, not registered in India. But for export invoices, they have said it is going to be applicable. Second point which I like to draw here, that we always see that debit note, credit note linkage with the original invoices. So there may be a case that you are using debit note and credit note post 1st October 2020, which is related to your original supply made prior to 1st October 2020. Is it going to be applicable? Answer is yes. And you must have seen that even GST common portal has done away the linkage of this credit note and debit note with the original invoices. It can be with multiple invoices. So this is pertaining to debit note, credit note. And independently, there should be e-credit note, e-debit note for B2B supply along with a tax invoice and export invoice. And where it is not going to be applicable, bill of supply, which is meant for exempted supply. But we are going to discuss a challenge later. If I'm engaged into an exempted tax invoice come bill of supply, what to be done? I will discuss later. But if it is exclusive, exempted supplies, not applicable. Receipt voucher, when you receive advance money, you issue a receipt voucher, not applicable. And advance money only for supply of services chargeable to GST. But for receipt voucher, nothing, no provision of generation of invoice going to be applicable. Refund voucher, when you refund the money, advance money. Payment voucher, when you make payment to your supplier under RCM liability, payment voucher. Self-invoice when generated under section 31, subsection 3, clause F, need, it is not applicable. And ISD invoice and any debit note and credit note pertaining to ISD invoice, not applicable. This is a clarity for which supplies covered for generation of invoice. Coming, uh, when coming into the force, importantly, we all know as per the notification first, October 2020, 1st 
October 2020. So this is the date where, by when this uh, e-invoicing provision going to be applicable. How to generate e-invoice. This is the important aspect. And I'm going to take five minutes here for your understanding sake. How this uh, generation of e-invoice which we are referring to. I will take you to the process flow also. And I'm showing you the provision both together. Kindly look at five minutes sincerely so that you get a clarity for the provision. Now, when I talk about how to generate e-invoice, these are the bullet point which you must note that a taxpayer will continue to create their GST invoice from their own accounting, billing and ERP system. Now, these invoices which is being uh, created and generated from their own accounting, billing and ERP system, it needs to be in specified form. And this is called as per e-schema. And it would be in the form GST INB01. Then converted into JSON file. And the particulars are then uploaded in JSON file to dedicated government portal which is called invoice registration portal. And I say this is www.einvoice1.gst.gov.in. On reporting, after uploading, IRP going to do validation of the data as per the e-schema. Secondly, going to create IRN number, invoice reference number, unique number, digitally sign this invoice with QR code and after this it will uh, give it back to the supplier in JSON file. So this JSON file along with QR code is being given back to the supplier and then supplier can issue the invoice to the buyer either in JSON or PDF file or printed copy and this QR code which is being provided need to be printed on the invoice itself this is what and most importantly the last line if any person who is liable for generation of e invoice and he has not followed this process and not having valid irn number then that invoice going to be called invalid invalid means the buyer recipient will not get any credit so it is responsibility of buyer to ensure the supplier, if he's liable to generate e-invoice, he must generate e-invoice with IRN number, digitally signed with QR code. If as a buyer you are not getting it, then that invoice would be called invalid invoice and credit in the hands of buyer would be denied. So it's a responsibility of buyer also now to check whether the supplier is really required to generate e-invoice and how you're going to check all this thing. There's one dedicated portal, I told you. You can go and put GS10 number and check whether this relevant supplier is really liable and they are unable on that portal generation of e-invoice even those suppliers who are liable for generation of e-invoice, they can also check their status on this dedicated IRP by putting their GST number. Whether generation of e-invoice is being enabled on that dedicated portal. If it is not enabled, they must write back to the authority that they should be unable for generation of e-invoice. Responsibility for both supplier and recipient. More to discuss, just follow my presentation. This is what the process. So in process, I'm going to discuss how the things going to be when we talk about supplier to generate invoice. So first in this window, I'm discussing supplier to IRP, invoice registration portal. Look at on the left hand side and follow by the numbers, number as given so that you understand everything. And there the one cut point, seller, which is supplier. And second is invoice registration portal. 
if you look at from sailor perspective sailor have to jason uh, preparation utility from excel word erp accounting and billing software so you may be generating your own invoice maybe in excel uh, maybe from your erp accounting or billing software but you should have utility to convert into json file and those service provider who are engaged in accounting billing and erp software they are going to give you this utility which will convert your invoice into json file as per the e schema once this json file is being created so step number 1 prepare the e invoice as per the schema having mandatory gst number invoice number date value etc they are mandatory field as per the e schema and there are optional field as well once this is being prepared then you are going to upload what you are going to upload the json file of e invoice to the erp and once it is uploaded activity start for the irp what irp going to do irp going to accept your json file through api and accept json file direct uploading process and what they are going to do they are going to generate irn number invoice reference number they are going to do deduplication check with the gst system whether the gst number is correct the data and particulars as provided are correct mandatory field are or correctly filled up or not everything then it is going to sign digitally sign with the qr code and then the fifth step would be it is going to return the signed invoice e invoice in json to the seller with qr code included in it then the activity start this is the next activity and in this activity after receiving this digitally signed json of e that contains the qr code the next process it is going to send irp going to send the data to two portal one is gst portal and another is to ebay bill portal and with this process irp when pushing the data to gst and common portal your gstr1 get auto filled so this is the next slide look at here from irp gst system an ebay bill system i was on this point in the preceding slide so what this irp going to do irp going to send the authenticated payload to gst system and ebay bill system so then what happen your gst system going to get all uh, all data checked and once checked it is going to auto fill gstr one of supplier table 4a 4b 4c table 6a 6b 6c table 9b and table 12 auto filled in gstr one of supplier and similarly gstr 2a of buyer getting updated for itc availment so buyer next process comes buyer so buyer can use the qr code to verify the invoice so what happened supplier who got the json file which is digitally signed having unique irn number and qr code buyer can check this qr they can uh, use the qr code mobile app check whether this invoice is the correct invoice and having valid irn number with the mobile app buyer can view the itc related invoice in a gstr 2a and uh, similarly this irp going to provide the data to ebay bill portal for generation of ebay bill part a can be auto filled if you are filling up part b transporter id and uh, details of transportation mode of transportation then you can generate instant ebay bill this is what the process all about from irp to gstn gst portal ebay bill portal then the activity of supplier to the buyer and this is a complete process flow this is available to you which you can always have a check this ppt would be available this is what i discuss with all of you so seller uploading json file 
to IRP. IRP is validating, creating unique invoice reference number, digitally signed with QR code, pushing the data to GST common portal for GSTR1 and GSTR2A, and then eBay bill portal for generation of eBay bill, and buyer can see his credit in GSTR2A. This is overall process. Now, having said that, what is this IRN which we are referring to? Invoice reference number. This invoice reference number is a unique number. It is a hash of 64 digit alpha numeric. And this is being created on the basis of supplier GSTIN, financial year, document type, and document number. This is what it is going to be looks like. 64 digit alphanumeric has this is unique pan india given to unique particular invoice which is getting generated through irp now what is the mode of report reporting to irp how the supplier can upload json file of invoice to irp various mode are being prescribed offline tool based it can be API based, it can be GSP based, GST Subida service provider, it can be mobile app based. These are all testing going on. You can always go back and check integration of your ERP with IRP for uploading JSON file of invoice to IRP. Free offline utility will also be provided in due course through which invoice can be reported to get IRN. IRN generation option through mobile app will also be made available. Now, invoice, and we all are talking about e-schema. What is this e-schema and format which we are referring to? In one line, e-schema is nothing but a standardized form and form GST INB01, which contains specified particulars. Unified for all of us, all registered person coming from different segment, different sector. It is unified. And this schema ensure e-invoice is machine readable and interoperable. Invoice format can be readily picked up, read, unstood and further processed by different system like Joho, Tele and SAP and Oracle, etc. This is e-schema. Now, when I say this is, looks like sample invoice with QR code, this is uh, what QR code which you can see in a sample invoice. And this sample invoice having specified particulars as per schema, which is being issued and revised schema is being issued by notification number 60 oblique 2020. Now, dynamic QR code, quick response code. If you look at dynamic QR code, then this IRP is going to generate IRN number, digitally signed, and QR code. And QR code going to have eight key particulars. Eight key particulars. Once you scan QR code, you can see all these eight particulars. And what are those eight particulars? GSTIN of supplier and recipient. Invoice number given by supplier. So question may come to your mind. Whether invoice number can be given by supplier also. Along with IRN. Yes, possible. You can give your invoice number as you want. And then it will have unique IRN number as well as it has. Which would be coming in a QR code. Date of generation of invoice. Invoice value which is talking about taxable value and gross tax. Number of line items, there are 1,000 line items prescribed and permissible. So with the QR code, you can see how many line items are covered in that particular invoice. Access and code of main item to be picked up. You need not require to pick up access and code of each line item. The main line item access and code need to be picked up, which is having highest taxable value. And this QR code can be verified offline verification would be possible through mobile app and this is going to be launched very soon now 
their B2C supplies. So any registered person whose aggregate turnover is more than 500 crore and making B2C supply. Before I say, I would like to understand from the participants today, please tell me in a chat box whether this B2C supply more than 500 crore, whether this supplier has to route through IRP or they can create by themselves. So maybe you can write down in a chat box, they have to route through IRP for B2C supply, or you can say without IRP, which means they can create their QR code from their own accounting, billing, and ERP software. Let me see in a chat box. Please tell me, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing chat box. Please answer me uh, through IRP or without IRP. Through IRP or without IRP, please. That's what I'm looking into. Please tell me. It is without IRP. Yes, I agree. Those who are writing without IRP, they all are right. Without IRP. So for B2C supplies, B2C supplies, yes, all right, because IRP will not accept B2C supply only for B2. B, this is the answer. Going forward, now the specific IRN and QR code for the registered person. As I said, IRN would be 64 digit string based has, and which will have a particulars of GS TIN number of seller, document type, document number, and financial year. This is a combination used for creating 64 alphanumeric string has QR code. It is string, not image. So from IRP, you're going to get string only. And then you need to decipher into image and which will have eight specified particulars. Seller's GSTIN number, recipient GSTIN number, invoice number, date of invoice, invoice value, number of line items, and adjacent code of main item, with unique IRN number. This is what coming out from QR code. So document numbers should not be starting with zero. These are the guidelines. IRN will be generated by the system. No option to populate. You need not require to. It would be generated by IRP. And taxpayer with this, you know, kind of uh, GST number, an invoice with number ABC, how it would be the example of 64 digit alphanumeric has for IRN is being demonstrated here. Coming to the invoice sending to the buyer, some provision. Now, these are the case studies for your understanding set. Once IRP returning the JSON file after validation, creating a unique IRN number digitally signed and with QR code. Who is going to provide the invoice to the buyer? This is the responsibility. So four questions I created and these questions are being covered in FAQ also. Can you look at these questions for getting answer? First, on generation of IRN, build the IRP, invoice registration portal send or email the invoice to the buyer, receiver. Answer is no. IRP will not do this. Upon receiving JSON from IRP, it is for the supplier to send the e invoice along with the QR code printed on the invoice to the receiver. Next question. How will the supplier send the e invoice to the receiver? So suggested mechanism may be to exchange the PDF of the JSON file received from IRP, which includes signed QR code as the best authenticated version of the e-invoice for business transaction. However, a mechanism to enable system-to-system -system exchange of e-invoice will be provided in due course. Last taxpayer for whom e-invoicing is compulsory because there are more than 500 crore will be making supplies to small businesses less than 500 crore. 
for whom he invoicing is not mandatory how these small business will get the invoice from those big suppliers in same way as it is being done now for example the large taxpayer can convert the signed e invoice json into pdf and say the copy by email send printed copy by post or courier etc amendment and cancellation so in case you have uploaded the particulars on irp now you want to do amendment or cancellation possible or not possible look at for amendment json sent for generation of e invoice cannot be amended first of all irp is only pass through system pass through system no amendment possible on irp irn cannot be amended once generated cannot be amended amendment is possible only on gst portal as irp going to push the data on gst portal so similar as the way we are doing now so whenever you want to do amendment by issuance of debit note and credit note you can do with your gstr1 and on gst common portal and once you are generating a credit note and debit note as an amendment to original supply and b2b make sure that these credit note debit note going to be e credit note and e debit note need to be routed through irp cancellation e invoice cannot be partially cancelled in case you want to cancel it cannot be partially it would be full cancel and that too within 24 hours that's what the provision talks about and this cancellation is possible on irp but within 24 hours and this cancel irn api can be used for cancellation but within 24 hours an exception is being created a valid ebay bill exists for that irn as goods are in movement then you cannot cancel even within 24 hours amendment is possible and that too only on gst common portal irn cannot be generated again on same invoice number so invoice need to be cancel in case you want to do that fresh invoice need to be raised for generating a fresh irn number irn cannot be regenerated for cancelled irn now this is the slide which is talking about linkage invoice linkage with the ebay bill portal and gst portal and certain question which is quite frequently asked by all the participants pan india these questions i have selected for the clarity the first question which is important with the introduction of e invoicing each ebay bill still compulsory answer is yes though with the generation of e invoice it should be done away with but at the moment ebay bill needed next question e invoice details to be pushed to gst system will they populate the return yes this is going to auto populate in my gst r1 table 4 table 6 table 9b table 12 auto populate with the ebay bill get auto populated part a normally get auto populated if you have fill the particulars of transporter id mode of transportation truck number etc then part b also get auto fill and instantly you can generate your ebay bill now coming to the registration process what need to be done in case you are registered person and you need to generate e invoice what is the process you need to follow first you go to a site www.invoice1.gst.gov.in and put your gstn number by this system they have automatically enabled looking at your aggregate turnover pan basis taking all gstn into account and the same pan number all india they have mostly enabled and they have sent one auto mail to all such large taxpayer in case you have not received such mail you can go back to this particular irp portal put your gst number and see whether you are unable or not unable and in case you are not unable write back immediately they will make you unable and in case you find you are unable but you are not liable 
your aggregate turnover is less than 500 crore kindly write back to them that i'm unable but i need not require to i need not require to for generation of e invoice so these are the process which you can follow for the registration on dedicated irp now the challenges and this is the last slide where i'm going to discuss 10 important challenges then i got frequently asked question if required, I will deliberate. I will answer your query, whatever you're putting in a questions box. I will see your chat box if you want to have any clarity. But look at these challenges. These are very, very important. And these challenges, as on date existing, creating turmoil in the mind of taxpayer registered person, how to go about for generation of invoice. These are the 10 dedicated points. And with RB ready. So first one. Any registered person whose aggregate turnover is more than 500 crore in any of the three preceding financial years, 17, 18, 18, 19, and 1920. We have heard from the government side, they're going to issue a notification where they are going to say any one out of three financial year. Aggregate turnover, meaning I've explained, includes taxable supplies, intra, inter, B2B, B2C, export and exempted supply, even supplies between distinct person. Aggregate turnover, that is how we calculate. Now, there are three portals. One is your IRP, invoice registration portal, registration to be done. One is GST portal and one is eBay bill portal, eBay bill gst.gov.in. At the moment, such registered person need to be registered on three portal. First challenge, what we all are looking for, integration. Maybe it will happen down the line, but at the moment, you need to be on three portal. First for generation of invoice on IRP portal. Second on GST common portal for your filing GSTR1, GSTR3B. Third for generation of eBay bill challenge. There's nothing but we, can, we all are talking and saying to the government kindly integrate. Second, for supplier, there would be reconciliation now. Reconciliation of what? B2B versus B2C. For B2B, they will have e invoice routed through IRP. But for B2C, normal tax invoice with QR code auto from their system, it is being generated. So maybe my GSTR one will have two invoice particulars. One would be invoice for B2B supplies, one is the normal supply B2C which is not rooted through IRP, but having QR code, reconciliation. 3B, transaction need to be captured accordingly. And then you need to capture whether you have really got IRN for all the invoices, reconciliation need to be done. And I've told you for the amendment, you can't do on IRP. It need to be on GST portal. Cancellation can be done within 24, 24 hours but subject to eBay bill is generated and goods are in transit. So subject to reconciliation. And this is what with eBay bill also. So eBay bill would be required even for B2B and B2C having value more than 50,000. Just imagine the kind of reconciliation and compliances to be undertaken by the supplier. And that too on three different portal. Next challenge for the recipient. I know a lot of you are watching this webinar and they are just thinking that as a recipient, I need not require to do anything. I need not require to. I'm creating one line item for you. You are a registered recipient purchasing from me and I'm having aggregate turnover more than 500 crore. If I don't generate e invoice, do not get IRN number, digitally signed invoice, and with QR code through IRP, then that would be invalid invoice for you. And credit is not available as per 16. 
Rule 48, sub rule 4 has created a provision that uh, any registered person who aggregate turnover more than 500 crore, he has to compulsorily generate e invoice. And that would be a valid invoice for availing credit. Being recipient, are you not entitled to check who all are the last taxpayer? They need to generate e invoice from October 1, 2020. And how you're going to check all this thing on same portal that the IRP e invoice one instead of two written, just it is e invoice one dot gst dot gob dot in. On that portal, you just put the GST number and check the vendor status, supplier status, whether he's required to be under e invoicing system. If it is so, you write back to them and tell them from October 1, I would be needing e-invoice, which is having a duly IRN number, digitally signed with QR code. Then only credit available. For you also, it is a challenge. Kindly check. This is a challenge for you as a recipient. So reconciliation needs to be made. E-invoice versus normal tax invoice. Maybe you would be purchasing from two kinds of vendor. Last taxpayer more than 500 crore, less than 500 crore. So reconciliation of e-invoice and then normal tax invoice coming as a credit in GSTR 2A and now going to be GSTR 2B for availing credit in GSTR 3B. It's a process now you need to check. Even for the generation of eBay bill, eBay bill can be generated either by supplier, by recipient or transporter. In case you generate the eBay bill as a recipient, reconciliation to be made, whether this eBay bill against e-invoice or this eBay bill against normal tax invoice, such reconciliation need to be made. Third point, which is coming out, fourth point rather, tax invoice come bill of supply. Big dispute. I'm a registered person. I'm engaged in uh, taxable supplies and exempted supplies. B2B, no denial. So for taxable supplies, I am normally supposed to raise tax invoice. For exempt supplies, I need to generate bill of supply. But what happened? My taxable supply and exempt supply comes under one invoice. What to be done? Because as per the law, B2B, we are talking about for taxable supplies. This is what we are referring to and no clarity as on date provided. In my humble opinion, in such case, you need to bifurcate taxable supplies should be put under tax invoice for generation of e-invoice and exempt supply and the bill of supply should be excluded for generation and routing through IRP. As per me, as of now till the time clarity provided. Forward charge method versus reverse charge method. So I'm a supplier. My aggregate turnover is more than 500 crore. But let's say my outward is falling under reverse charge method, like advocate, like GTA. Anyone, I'm giving example. My outward falling under reverse charge method. And aggregate turnover is more than 500 crore. Then tell me, I'm asking in the chat box to all of you, with a supplier continue to follow the provision of e invoicing or being recipient on the reverse charge method, you need to follow generation of e invoice. So, write supplier or recipient in a chat box. I'm seeing your chat box. Tell me in a chat box, supplier or recipient. Sanjay Sahar, Neeraj Sadma, well, appreciated, appreciated. Yes, it is supplier need to follow the provision. Jamis Kumar, no recipient, it is only supplier, only supplier. Rama Mohan kindly make a note and take down as a supplier. He need to do, he had to only take liable for RCM liability. So supplier need to follow the provision for generation of e-invoice, even liable for reverse charge method. Now the next question which is coming out, what happened if my power down, internet down, IRP down, possible. This is quite realistic position. And uh, government want me to generate IRN number digitally signed with QR code through IRP. What should 
I be doing if power is not there, internet is not there, and sometimes portal is down. We all are looking for answer. None is having the answer as of now. They have said IRP is going to have only pass-through portal, pass-through portal. And they had got another nine dedicated portal like e-invoice 2.gst.gov in, like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So maybe to cater the voluminous data, if a dedicated portal e-invoice one is not working out, they may create another window for uh, as a IRP to catering this uh, generation of IRN digitally signed with QR code. Now, the next question, if supplier fails to raise e-invoice, which he's supposed to, can he send normal tax invoice? No way possible. If it's liable, then for all B2B supplies compulsorily, mandatorily, he has to raise e-invoice. Being recipient, you should not accept if we accept normal tax invoice with supplier otherwise liable for uh, invoice, credit is not available to you. So make sure you are getting uh, e-invoice with valid IRN number. Then only it is valid tax invoice for getting credit. What buyer need to do? I told you as a recipient, you're carrying the responsibility of what? You're carrying the responsibility of checking the GST status of supplier, whether he's liable for generation of e-invoice, sending an email to them and tell them they need to now generate e-invoice from October 1, 2020. Now from preparedness, training and readiness, supplier perspective. Now supplier has to really make sure their own ERP accounting and billing software is ready with e-schema for generation of unified invoice, having all standard particulars converted into JSON file, uploaded on IRP. IRP after validating, returning it back with the IRN number digitally signed with QR code. And then the supplier is sending these invoices to the buyer, either in JSON, PDF, printed, email. But the QR code need to be printed on the face of invoice, on the face of invoice. And being buyer, you can scan the QR code through mobile app and check the particulars authenticated or not for availing credit. So these are the preparation. But now you need to really check your sourcing department, sales department, accounts department, tax department. All last taxpayer first need to do and undertake training session for education how to be done. In case uh, there's power break, in case there's IRP down, how the business need to be rooted through. How you need to divide your taxable supplies versus exempt supplies. How this IRN reconciliation with your e-invoice and the normal tax invoice for B2C need to be done. Lot many activities is piling up. And 14 days left, we have to start. But last and foremost point, you all would be thinking why government has not given enough time to us for preparation for this e-invoicing system. I'm sure you'd be thinking on those lines. Let me highlight three, four important points. The first point, government has lost 1,20,000 crore rupees in the last three years. Second, what needs to be done? that you have seen that uh, they have taken up aggregate turnover more than 500 crore, meaning thereby they are only covering 7,500, around 7,500 pan-based companies, which is around 48,000 GST number, which is approximately 0.2% of total GST taxpayer base. Why they have started with a low percentage? These percentage are giving 45% of total GST collection. And government has planned in a phase manner to expand it and then reduce this aggregate turnover going to be applicable in time to come for mass taxpayer and the GST system. And third and foremost advantage to book, it is deterrent against tax evasion. It is deterrent against 
the ITC, which is being disputed in terms of Rule 36 sub Rule 4, Rule 86A of CGST rule, for honest taxpayer, recipient will be getting automatic credit in their GSTR 2A with this invoicing system. And this process is going to automate and digitize the process of transparency and credit availment in the hands of recipient, buyer of goods and services. So last point, which I said, are we ready? But there are certain FAQs also. Time is less. That's the reason I'm not reading out all FAQs, leaving it aside, which you can see later. This PPT would be given at the end of this, you know, this video. So you can download it. But in case you're having some query suggestion, you can always uh, check and go back to GST and team and write back some suggestion. And if you want to learn more about the invoicing system, you can always go back to this link and check more detail for invoicing. And last and foremost, what uh, we can do for you, I've given my number, my email ID, along with the Joho team, you can come back to us for more clarity, how you can implement and get yourself ready for this e-invoicing system applicable from October 1, 2020. Thanks for your patient listening. Thank you very much. Handing over to Joho team. Sir, thank you so much, sir, for the session. Uh, now we have uh, Danish from our Zoho Books uh, product expert team uh, to give us a demo on e-invoicing and how it would work in Zoho Books. Uh, Danish, I'm passing on the session control to you now. Yes, sir, Robin. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Uh, yes, Danish, it's visible to me. Let's just well, this, uh, uh, Can all the participants just uh, give me a thumbs up or hi, hello, so that I can just confirm that yes, you're able to see my screen. Well, so I think we are good to go. Yeah. So hello everyone. Hi, this is Danish here and I'm a product expert of Zoho Books. Once again, thank you all for joining us today. So now our CA Bimal Jain has plotted on what is e-invoicing. But now how do we generate this e-invoice with your accounting system? So are you ready for that? We as Zoho Finance Suite has got this sorted right away for you. So today what I'll do is I'll walk you through a short demo on how this is made simpler with Zoho Books for you. So this will be the user interface of Zoho Books. To enable e-invoicing, you just need to navigate to settings and then preferences, and you would have an option here which is known as e-invoicing. So currently I have configured a test account so i'm getting the option of reconfigure else i'd get an option connect now once i enable it i'd be asked for the credentials so ideally the credentials would be if you have registered zoho as a gsp in the eWable portal you can use the same credentials if not you can generate a new credential from the irp portal so once you're done with this step your irp portal and Zoho Books would be connected. So now we are good to go. I will now show you how this invoice is created and we generate the IRN number. All right. So creating an invoice is much simple. Just click on new invoice. From the customer name, you just choose up which customer it is. But now we have mandated some of the fields as prescribed by the IRP portal, which would be your customer name, the billing address, the GST treatment, and the GSTN number, place of supply, the invoice number, the invoice date. So now with respect to your item details, your HSN or the SAC code is being made as a mandatory one. So once I choose the item, I need to enter the HSN or the SAC code. I put in the rate for this. The GST gets populated automatically. I just save this invoice. So now this is a traditional invoice which we are normally creating. 
does this have a qr code or an irn number not yet right this is just a draft invoice once the invoice is created it will be in a draft status and the label would be yet to be pushed just because the irn number has not yet generated so now how we IRN number would be generated. It is just done within seconds for you. You just need to click on push to IRP button. Okay. So now I have some errors with respect to the HSN or the SAC field. So just because of that, I'm getting an error that see the pushing to IRP has failed. So if at all there are no errors as such, the IRN will be generated and you would have an option of copy IRN. If you just scroll down a little bit, you would find this invoice which has a QR code and the IRN, the 64 digit, I mean, sorry, the alphanumeric code. So now you can send this invoice to your customer. All right. Okay, now we have seen how do you create an invoice without an e -wable. right? Now, what in case you will have to generate an e bill along with this IRN number? It is again made simpler. So once you have this option of push to IRP, you would be having a pop-up which states that generate it with e bill, generate it without e bill. So if you choose generated with e bill, you would be asked for the uh, evable details, the transport details and all these things. So you just need to fill in that and push it to the portal. So what happens right away, we push the details to the evable portal that is from the IRP, it has been pushed to the evable portal and the evable is generated and also the evable number will be displayed on the invoice. All right, so now this is done. What if the invoice has created and now you want to cancel this. If it's going to be within 24 hours, you can just click on this cancel e invoice. Just choose the reason and click on cancel e invoice. So right away, this e invoice that is the IRN will no longer be valid and this is a void invoice. Now, what if the 24 hour time limit is being lapsed? So in this case, you will have to go to the portal and you will have to cancel it in the GST portal only. Just because if it's gonna be only within 24 hours, it's gonna stay in the IRP portal and post the 24 hours time limit, it will be pushed to the GST portal as such. So once you have canceled it, you get it as canceled here and yeah. Now, what if the IRN is not generated and how do I identify that? So here we do have a status label which is put up, which says failed either due to the incomplete data or some the portal issue there, that is the IRP portal issues. Okay, so now we have seen of how do we create a single invoice, all right. now. What if you have created invoice in bulk? Let's say like, you know, you have created 10 invoices and right away you would want to push that to the IRP and generate the IRN. You click on all invoices and you will be having a filter here, which is yet to be pushed for e-invoicing. Just choose this filter. And now you need to just choose which are all the invoices which has to be pushed and you will find a more option Click on this and push to IRP. IRP. So, so once you choose this push to IRP button, what happens? The IRN gets generated. But what if you say that there are some errors in this? How would we handle this? If we create a single invoice, yes, the error is popping out there for you. But now how would this be handled? Okay. For all these five invoices, let's say there are two invoices which has the HSN error and maybe your GSTN number, which is wrong. We would drop you an email stating that, hey, you have tried creating e invoice for these five invoices. That is the generate, try to generate the IRN for these five invoices, but wherein only two has been failed just because of these so-and-so errors. And you can come back to Zoho Books 
edit the invoice, make the necessary changes, and then you can push this to the portal again and generate the IRM. Okay, so we have seen how to create an invoice, how to push it to the IRP portal. Okay, but now what if you have some recurring invoices, the sale which you know, which is going to happen on a regular basis? So you just create a recurring invoice, okay? And you set the frequency when this invoice has to repeat, okay? You can either choose it month or, uh, or you know, you can just choose your uh, custom dates as well. So, but for this, how is the preference being handled? Like directly, is it going to be sent to the portal or to the customer or what is the use case in this? Again, we will navigate to preferences and the recurring invoice preference. Here you do have free preference in this case. Zoho Books will create invoices and save it as draft, post which you will have to push it to the IRP and generate the IRN and the QR code, or else you can choose the preference as create, push it to the IRP portal automatically, and send the invoice to the customer itself. Or either you can choose create, charge the customer in case of recurring payments as such, if you have added a credit card, I mean, the, your customer has added a credit card. And you push these to the portal, that is Zoho Books automatically does it, and you send it to the customer, that is again, Zoho Books does it for you. So this is how e-invoicing has been made simpler with Zoho Books and yeah. Thank so, you. So hey Robin. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, thank Robin. you for the session. I hope uh, the process of e-invoicing was very clear to our audience and how easy it is to follow the processing uh, Zoho Books and how it can help you be tax compliant from day one. Well, Robin. Okay, uh, so uh, now I'll just pass on, pass on the session control to uh, Bimal Jain, sir, so that he could answer all the questions that uh, that we have received in the questions tab. Hi, friends. Back once again. Let me take queries, whatever I got in chat box, whatever question I saw in question answers, I responded back. I'm just picking up the query in a chat box. So just rolling over that the can uh, Sanjay Saha is asking, can we send goods through Delvi Chalan in case site is not up? See, Delvi Chalan possible, no problem. And uh, as per me, there's no bar and uh, we need not require to do through. But again, you need to follow the provisions. Once uh, this delivery is accepted, you need to generate e-invoice Delvi Chalan along with the eBay bill. Possible from my side, Sanjay ji, no problem. Anup ji is asking, Anup Agarwal is asking whether recipient more than 500 crore is liable to generate e-invoice in case of RCM. No, it is supplier's responsibility. That's what my answer, Anup ji. Uh, now, Bhaskar Jagannathan is asking, sir, what is the solution for September 20 credit note, debit note, while raging during the month October 20? Don't worry about that. There's nothing like, you know, spillover. Whatever credit note, debit note generated in the month of October, you can generate as an independent transaction as a e-credit note and e-debit note and with no reference of your original invoice. Possible and that is what being answered with one of the frequently asked questions as well. Going up in the chat box, Sivam is asking, can supplier sign invoice with image copy of signature, which is directly print by system? Now, once... You are getting this suggestion file from IRP, which is having unique invoice reference number digitally signed and uh, having QR code. To my mind, you need not require to sign it. But in case you want to put your signature, you can put your signature, but that is not compulsory required for this invoice, which is now being routed through IRP. Now, this is the answer. Then Jha Kumar is asking, how are billing portal like ERP will... QR code on invoice for B2C. Do we have to change software, something else? See, you need to check within your system whether it can create QR code or not. You need to ask your service vendor for generation of QR code for B2C supplies. Mr. Jha, Rama Mohan, 
there were uh, there will be dynamic qr code need to generate without yes this is the answer which you gave and the right answer i agree with you going up in a chat box uh, puneet is asking how do we ensure that our supplier comes under mandatory issuance of e invoice puneet i responded back again repeating that you need to put the gst number of your supplier on that dedicated gst invoice portal www dot invoice one dot gst dot gov dot in and check his status whether he is compulsory required to generate e invoice status will come before you and you can write back a mail to such vendor and supplier last taxpayer in case you feel like for their confirmation are they falling into these provision for compulsory generation so that you are tax compliant for availing credit post facto October one two thousand twenty on their invoice for availing credit. now there is one uh, rama mohan is saying r is export oriented organization having more than 500 crore daily number of invoices usually we generate not more than 10 numbers so we have downloaded json file and uh, file required data and then uploaded e invoice got generated by e invoice portal but the question raises where there are no fields like unit cost in foreign currency destination port details con certain condition also HSN code starting with zero is also not accepting by the e invoice portal. Ah, uh, HSN code with zero, little doubtful, Mr. Rama. HSN code will have a respective HSN code. I do not know which zero you are referring to, but I do agree. Question pertaining to uh, like unit cost, foreign currency, destination port. There are the challenges. What you can do, I provided the email ID of GST, and you can write back to them and convey your concern for invoice. pertaining to export invoice where generation of e invoice is being stated in frequently asked questions what about delvi chalan no uh, delvi chalan no e invoice generation is required mr mp gupta ji not required pius is asking what about b2g where government does not have regular gst number if they are not having regular gst number to my mind this provision is not applicable like they have taken uh, registration for tds purpose not required unless they are regularly registered and this is what uh, we all are looking for the clarification to my mind if they are having normal gst number it will be considered as a b2b supply hence applicable having said uh, suryam uh, is asking that uh, sir in case of wholly export of goods or services aggregate turnover more than 500 crore it invoicing required though it is not b2b i agree dear and that's what i said in my presentation as well that export are not b2b because my recipient will not be registered but that is what faq issued by nic nic and gstn they are saying even for export invoices they are looking for generation of e invoice maybe it's a matter of representation which can be given to the government i will take up this issue will communicate to them for export this should done away this provision unless they are having some logical reason for that i will come back to you stay tuned with joho maybe we would be doing lot more other webinar we will come back to you what are the point coming out and what is the clarity given by the government of india now okay this is being done uh, uh jha kumar is asking after the signature in government portal do we have to sign invoice again no not required i responded back so most of the queries which i saw in a chat box i responded in case you are having query you can write back in chat box now which i will respond you in question answer also i responded avijit is saying sir whether there will be time limit for generation for e invoice there is nothing like time limit it is a realistic it is uh, it is working on real time basis see what happened you know under section 31 of cgst act you need to generate invoice on or before removal of goods generation of tax invoice is necessary now this tax invoice is nothing but e invoice same provision you have to follow what is being given under section 31 for goods and for services like for services time period is stipulated time period we can generate the invoice before or after but within a stipulated time period 30 days 45 days in case of a finance company nbfc etc so you have to follow that time limit for generation of irn there is no change same provision applicable puneet is saying as recipient is there any requirement to accept credit or reject it on gst portal as a recipient if some credit which is not available to you 
See, now they are doing one uh, new, uh, you know, GSTR 2B, eligible, ineligible. So they are showing that this credit is eligible, this credit is ineligible. But I'm of the view, even uh, under ineligible credit, there is some credit which is eligible to you for a number of different regions. So you can check if something which is coming under eligible, but you think it is not available to you, you should not accept and should not take in a GSTR 3B as availing credit in Table 4A of GSTR 3B. So Anup is saying ISD not required, Anupji, for ISD it need not require neither debit note, credit note pertaining to ISD invoices. So from my side, I taken all the questions, I responded all the chat box, now last and foremost, as Joho team is doing this particular webinar for our preparation of uh, e-invoicing, I have taken up a lot many things uh, which is pertaining to e-invoice, but I given my email ID to all of you along with the Joho team. You can write back to them as well, which will be given back to me and I will come back to you. So we'll try to make this GST process as a good and simple and try to make this e-invoicing system, which is now compulsory generation through IRP portal. We'll try to make it good simple easy for all of us i taken all the queries responded back and given all the chat uh, queries whatever was there in case uh, any further query i'm free to answer otherwise i'm thanking each one of you core of my heart thanking each one of you for your patient listening and taking out time to join this particular exclusive webinar on e-invoicing thanks for watching thank you very much thank you so much sir for uh, spending your time with us today and thank you to all our attendees for spending their valuable time with us will be uh, continuing and to provide more value to you on e-invoicing subject as well. One minute, one minute also I would like to take, like participants are there. I just want to have, you know, one thing from all of you. Uh, if though Joho team has conducted the poll and you have participated, maybe in a chat box you can write down. If at all uh, you need to be ready for preparation of e-invoicing, what level you feel you are prepared? Uh, are you prepared? 100% say yes. If you're not prepared, 100% say no. Write in a chat box. I want to just see the vibration of trade, industry, and commerce in terms of preparation because 14 days is left for this uh, process. Maybe you can write back in a chat box. So, uh, so a lot of participants, Mangesh uh, is saying something, Neera says no. Sanjay Sa is saying yes. Anoop is saying uh, yes. Okay, all right. So those who are uh, honestly saying 50% or no, I appreciate their gesture that they are honest about that. Uh, yes, they have to still prepare themselves. So 14 days left. My request, humble request, please get yourself prepared. Second question to all of you. Now we have done this webinar. I just want to understand the vibration of all the audience, those who have participated. After seeing this today's webinar, what is your gut feeling? You got something good good uh, things today acha and good one so if you are really like the presentation and the way you got the input which is content full and you got a lot of clarity right yes in your chat box in case you feel like no something still missing i'm ready to take your constructive feedback and suggestion okay so everyone is saying if uh with yes uh, got best from you all right. Good one, sir. Neeraj, thank you very much. Uh, Suryam, thank you. Sanjay ji, thank you very much. And last and foremost, see, we all are on the path of doing this GST, good and simple tax. So Manish is saying very good and interesting. Thanking each one of you from core of my heart. I'm trying my best. How to get your PPT, sir? Sanjay, Sanjay, this is now. Joho team will do the needful. I will ask Joho team to uh send pdf copy of this presentation this is only mean for you guys only who are taking out time and participating in this uh, webinar we are trying our best and last and foremost my last point to all of you in case we are not prepared only 14 days left joe team has also you know communicated how they can make your task easy kindly have a demo from them maybe your this task of you know implementing e-invoice through irp may be easy. That would be my humble submission. But you can always take demo. Uh, that might make your task good, simple, and easy. Now I'm saying thanks to each one of you. Thank you very much for your time and your patient listening. Thank you very much. Stay tuned with Bimal Jain. I'm there with all of you. Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas. Handing over to you, Robin. Thank you, sir. I think yeah, uh, we can close the session now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, some people have asked for the presentation and the recording. We will be sharing it as soon as possible. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.